everybody, it's Megan Ritz here with Classic Cakes for another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we are going to do a combination of a buttercream cake and a fondant cake to show you the difference between the two mediums. And we're going to do birch wood um, design. So I'm going to do the buttercream cake first and show you the techniques and how we do that. And then I'm going to show you the fondant cake. We'll talk about um, the benefits, the pros and the cons and also share with you what I like, what we like to do here, and then the, um, I'm getting tons of text, sorry guys, um, the benefits to doing those different techniques. Both are great, and you can make beautiful cakes with both. We do both here, it just depends on what the customer wants, um, and the budget, honestly, because buttercream cakes tend to be a lot faster, so they can be a little bit cheaper. Um, so it just is a matter of what the customer is needing and wanting out of the cake. Fondant cakes tend to look a little bit more realistic, but they also take a little bit more time. Um, so I'm going to show you guys some of my tools and then we'll grab the cakes and get started. If you have not already subscribed to our channel on YouTube, please make sure that you do that at the end of the video or jump over real quick to our YouTube channel. It is Classic Cakes Caramel. We need you to subscribe. We need to hit a thousand subscribers before we can start doing our lives over there. And so we're going to start giving away prizes. Um, and doing some competitions for you guys to help encourage you to help us with that. Um, so share with your friends and family. Um, if you love watching this channel, we need that support to move over to our YouTube channel. Jennifer is also going to be jumping on here today and helping answer some questions in the comments. So you will see her popping up as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let's see what we have today. So tool wise, I always have my beautiful turntables. Um, I've got my pointy and my angled spatulas here. I like the little ones. I feel like I have a little bit more control over them um, for detail work. I use the bigger ones when I am icing cakes, um, but I like the smaller ones for the detail work or finishing things. Um, I've got a paring knife and a little Zacto knife that we're going to use um, for our fondant work along with just a pizza cutter. Um, we've got a little skewer. You can use a toothpick um, or even a fork. Hey Jennifer, thanks for joining us. Um, so this is what we're going to use for the buttercream design. I've got scissors and if you watch normally you know I always have some kind of credit card gift card um, that has been sanitized that we like to use to help smooth the sides of the cake as well. Um, and then I also have, I love my fabric bags, this just has white buttercream in it today. All right, cool. I also have some colors here. I have my cakes iced in white. Um, both are gonna start that way. And then for the buttercream cake, we are gonna use a chocolate, just a nice brown, to make the lines in the sides of the cake. And we're gonna use this very light, soft, almost yellowy brown for the top to make the inside of the cut. So it's gonna look like if I sliced a birchwood tree so the top will have the rings of the birch tree and the sides will have the bark. So this is going to be the inside. Um, cool, let me grab my cake and we'll get started. Alright guys, today we have a red velvet with cream cheese, iced in buttercream. I always do my cakes in buttercream. Um, it just works a lot nicer, so we can do our cream cheese filling in there, um, but if they want decoration, then we're going to use buttercream. Um, this has been in the freezer for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, so that butter gets really solid um, and firms up for me. So we're going to do our buttercream birch tree first. So I'm going to start with my very light brown here, and I'm going to do the top of the cake and just ice it so that I get that color that I want the inside of the tree to look like. And it can be really thin since I already have the cake iced. You want it to hang over the edges of the cake and then we will scrape that off. So real fast. And then we can just clean up the edges. And the side here. 
it doesn't have to be really neat and pretty because you're doing a cake that has been cut or a tree that has been cut so it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth right the saw is going to leave cut marks the axe whatever has been used so the benefit to this kind of cake is it can be a little bit uneven and there is a perfectly good reason for that same with when you're doing like natural things like bark or flowers it shouldn't be super neat and perfect or it's not going to look natural anymore all right so we got a top of our cake and then i'm going to take my skewer i'm going to move it a little bit closer so you guys can see and i'm just going to do rings to make it look like the rings inside of the tree i'm just going to do a giant spiral and i'm going to kind of wave so that it's not perfectly circle spiral so if i don't wave and I end up with this perfect, like, neat circle, it doesn't look right. It looks like, you know those, like, evil clowns with the umbrellas? <laughs> that they spin them and, like, mesmerize you? That's what that makes me think of. So we don't want that. We want it to be um, uneven rings, so it looks like those uneven rings in a tree. So I like to start in the middle. You can start on the outside. It does not matter whatever you are comfortable with. And I'm just gonna, every once in a while, move it around so it's not perfectly symmetrical. And some can be closer and some can be further away. I just keep going around until I finish off that. And I'm not perfectly centered here, but I'm not worried about that either. This is my last little guy. All right, so we got the rings on our tree. So it should be uneven. It shouldn't be perfect. Um, and you can always add little like bumps and little notches in there too. Sometimes it's nice when you're doing stuff like this to just like Google what a slice of tree bark looks like or rings in a tree or a birch tree and decide what kind of colors you want to do because there's a lot of range in colors and um, texture as well. And there are several different kinds of birch trees. All right, cool. So I've got some little bumps and notches in there just to make it look more natural. Cool, so the top of the tree is done. Super simple, very easy to do, fun to do. Definitely recommend this for trying at home. Um, so for the sides of the cake, we're gonna put some lines and knots. I'm gonna use a parchment bag and put some of my dark chocolate here in the bag. And we're going to use this to cut lines into the cake. So it looks like tears. A birch tree cake usually is white or close to white bark. And they have bark that's like tearing and peeling off. So we want to replicate that as much as possible. And I'm going to sit down so I can be a little bit more steady when I do this. And I'm literally going to push the bag into the buttercream. So not what we would normally do when we're piping. We're normally piping with part on top of it, but I'm gonna pipe into, so I'm cutting lines into it. And because I'm doing that, I'm picking up some buttercream on my bag. So every once in a while I'll have to clean that off. And you really want them to be relatively uneven. Some different lengths. You don't want it to be super symmetrical. I tend to accidentally make things symmetrical. I think most of us do that. I have some that I cut into, but I didn't fill. There we go. So it doesn't have to be all the same. Some can be longer, shorter, deeper, more shallow. 
and then I like to take my card and just very lightly clean them up. And that's going to drag some of that color around the cake and that's what you want. You want to exaggerate those lines very faintly. I'm going to do another row lower. We're gonna do the same thing and just very gently drag on those lines. And you can see how it's just gonna make them a little bit softer. All right, so this is step one. We have the, the general look of the bark. Now we can do some things to put some tears and some knots in. You guys see the vodka? Everyone's commenting on the vodka bottle. <laughs> That's hilarious. We do use vodka in cake decorating. <laughs> Not just for a long night. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's too funny. If you've seen some other videos, you've seen us use the vodka. We use it for painting um, and we use it as glue as well. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I have some spots that are a little bit empty, so I'm gonna pop some more of these guys in here. <laughs> I love that. All right, so now we can make some tears and some knots, which is what I like best about these cakes. You want a little bit of texture, so also I have some buttercream on here, so I'm going to when I scrape it clean, you have that buttercream that's on here, you can push it back onto the cake and leave like little edges and that makes it look like there's little tears in the bark or like overlapping pieces of bark. So that's really what you want. So all those things that you've learned how to do to make your buttercream look really smooth, you have to kind of unlearn that for this cake. You want lots of texture and messiness and you want it to be uneven, so it looks not on purpose. Cool, so we have lots of those little pieces where you have just some texture going on, so it looks like you have those edges of the bark that is overlapping. For a knot, I take my coupler here so no tip on it. And I'm actually gonna just pipe a big circle. And then we're gonna like fan it out. So I like to use my pointy spatula and just kind of pull it out. And we're just gonna keep going until it looks a little bit more natural. And I'm not touching the middle because we're going to actually carve that out to make a little like hole in the middle. This is definitely a popular um, wedding cake design for rustic weddings. We see a lot of barn weddings, a lot of outdoor weddings. I just want something a little bit simple, but still rustic. All right, so I have this all pushed out and now what I can do is I can actually use the same spatula and just press flat on it and pull up to create some like packing almost. So I can pull that down and it just creates that little texture that blends it in nicely. This definitely works better if the buttercream is soft too. And it's just flat. I'm just tapping it on there flat. Let me go 
over here. It's always awkward trying to do stuff on the other side of the turntable. All right, and I just want to pull this out a little bit more than I need so it looks like it's blended in nicely. I don't want that to be the only spot that has that kind of texture, right? Okay, so now I have this giant, like, what do I want to call that? I have a giant dot on my cake. So I want to make it look like a knot. So I'm actually going to cut it out a little bit and just pull a hole out of it. This is really turning into that knot on the side of a tree. And we can take some darker color, like I have some black here. And we can put it inside there and just kind of smear it around and it will really clean it up. It will give it that shadowing and create some depth. Alright, so that is an easy way to make a knot on the side of your cake. So you can do as many of these or as few of these as you want to make it as knotty as you want. I don't know. <laughs> this is what happens. She's not used to watching me. I make up words a lot, actually. <laughs> Um, so you can leave it just like this, or I'm going to actually, I'm going to use a bigger tip and I'm going to pipe an edge around the top, um, just to clean up this edge here, um, and see how that goes. Oh, that's good. So I have a six on here, it's just a little bit larger. I probably should have done this before I did all my design on the sides, but we'll see what happens. I don't like that I can see the top color on the side. Um, I want the bark to come up over that, so I'm just going to pipe a line and see if I can blend it in. Sometimes you just have to fiddle with cakes. I'm going to go over to exaggerate that a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to take my pointy and just see if I can smooth that and blend it in. And I want it to be kind of bumpy and messy on top. Jennifer says, Terry Towner wants a squirrel to pop out. Terry Towner, I don't even know how to make a squirrel pop out of a cake. <laughs> that is for someone far more talented than me. Um, that's hilarious. We'll have to get um, someone else on here one night to help with some of those items. <laughs> She's suggesting other people. All right, so I'm just smoothing this on. I like this. I think the top edge being rough, I like. I don't think it needs to look neat and pretty. I think it should be bumpy. The bark, I imagine, is torn. So I like, I like this a lot. What do you guys think so far? Throw me some hearts, throw me some thumbs up. Tell me what you like. Do you think this is a win? Do you think we need to do fondant? I'm definitely gonna show you the fondant. Tara Toner needs a squirrel popping out of the cake. That's amazing. 
All right, so I smoothed that. I think I like it. Um, my knot, I'm just gonna go back over this area and blend a little bit more with this texture I have going on here. And then like I said, I don't want this to be the only spot with this kind of texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick another spot and I'm just gonna add some of that texture in here. It just makes it look a little bit rougher. I don't know what happened. Some, some damage to the bark, some animal, some weather, life of a tree. Cool. Alright, I think we are just about done. I think I feel pretty good about this one. So this is our buttercream. Like I said, you can do lots of knots. I tend to like knots and tears. Like to me, the more of those you have, the more real, the more personality that the cake has. So especially with the birch tree cakes, I like lots of knots and tears. Alright, let me clean up my space. And we will bust out the fondant cake. Tell me what you think. Throw me those hearts. Um, Jennifer, how we doing? How is everybody? Hey, Caitlin, thanks for jumping on. All right, so this is our buttercream birch tree cake. All right, I'm gonna put it back here by the vodka. Actually, I can't, because I'm gonna need that here. Yeah. All right, so for the fondant, um, I have my cake in the freezer. We're going to ice it in like a soft, um, gray brown color. I took some brown, um, and some white and some black and some orange actually, and mix this together to make a very soft, um, taupey black color. We're going to ice the sides in this color. We're going to ice the top in the same color we iced the other one in. Miss B is always making it look so easy, Megan. Thank you so much. Um, I don't, I, I wish I felt like it was, I wish I felt that way sometimes. I think um, practice makes progress. And um, I definitely feel like the more I do this, the more comfortable I am with you guys and sharing with you. And so it definitely becomes easier. You guys are amazing. And I love the support from you all. So thank you so much. Um, claw marks, I love it. I have no idea. <laughs> we could totally do claw marks. Um, I would take the pointy and I would literally claw into the cake. And then I'm gonna take um, a darker color, like a darker brown or maybe a black, and I would pipe in and then and then smooth it to make that shadowing. Um, it just depends what kind of animal you want. Christine says, I love Tuesday night. Thank you, I love it, me too. Um, all right, let me grab my other cake. Don't go anywhere. All right, I've got a white cake here with chocolate truffle filling. That cannot be a bad cake. Also, I gotta show you guys this other cake that's just sitting over here. Do a move. I believe Becky did that cake because of the writing on it. Um, it was a customer sent in a picture of a hat that their kid had and um, for his birthday, I think. <laughs> Jennifer knows the story, actually, she took the order. Um, but hilarious, love it, super excited for them to see this cake. It's so cute. Seafood and cake, love it. Yay! Thank you guys. Okay, awesome. So, let's get into the fun. I know this is the exciting part. So, buttercream, the perks to buttercream. It's fast. It's easy. It's cheap. You can make it simple or you can play with it and make it awesome. Both of those things, um, or that part, is kind of true for fondant too. Um, buttercream is also less scary for most people. So, if you're playing at home, 
buttercream tends to be less scary. Fondant is actually a lot easier to make it look good, to be honest. It just is a little bit more expensive um, and it takes a little bit more time. Um, I've done quite a few of these, so I'm gonna be able to bust it out pretty quickly. Um, it's super fun to do. Um, and we're gonna start off the exact same way. We're gonna ice the top of the cake in this light brown that's just a little bit yellowy to be the inside of that tree when it's cut where those lines are gonna be on top. So the top of the cake is gonna look exactly the same. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. I feel like I don't say that enough. Every cake decorator could have a totally different way of doing this. You could go on YouTube and watch decorating videos from a bunch of different decorators and see all kinds of different things. And none of them have to be wrong. There are different people in this building that do things differently and they don't have to be wrong. Um, it's just kind of the way that it goes with a, with a trade and with an art form. Jennifer says, this one I want a cake to look like a hat. Send a picture, Becky made it come to life. Yes, the crab cake, I love it. Crab cakes, ooh, mm, yum. Who makes the best crab cakes around Indy? Carmel, Indy area. I love crab cakes. All right, so we're just gonna smooth this top again. For those of you who are just joining, um, Christine says, I have learned a lot from YouTube. It is awesome, there's so many amazing resources. Um, you do not have to pay to have amazing resources for cake decorating. The benefit to having classes and interaction and paying for that is that you get that feedback, um, but you can learn a ton from YouTube or even Instagram or just trial and error, which is why I love this. We get to play together. All right, cool. So we just smoothed this. For those of you who are just joining um, the buttercream version, we're doing the fondant one the same way. It does not have to be perfect and neat. Um, it actually tends to look a little bit better if it's a little bit messy. Um, think about a tree that's been cut or broken apart, a saw or an ax. It's not gonna be perfect, right? At least sanded and beautiful. Um, it's gonna be a little bit uneven. All right, so I'm gonna do this guy really fast. Again, I don't like it to be perfect, so I tend to wiggle around a little bit and make it uneven make some close together, make some far apart. So far at least, I haven't had any tree genius come in here and tell me my rings are wrong. So, actually my husband's kind of a tree nerd, so I will ask him. I've called him out for being a tree nerd quite a few times on here. We talk about trees a lot, don't we? Leaves, trees, yeah. Especially in the fall, I guess. All right, so I'm going to the edge. You can go inside out, outside in. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit more. And then I like to do little bumps and notches. I think all those little imperfections just make things look a little bit more real. Symmetry is beautiful and it definitely has a place and it definitely is a sign of a talented artist. But sometimes it needs to not be symmetrical. Okay, now I'm gonna take this beautiful, I love this color, brown, gray-ish. I took the chocolate and some white and some black and some orange. So the reason I did orange, just to share this with you, I took the chocolate and the black and some white and made it light. And um, what happened was it was a little bit purple looking, like when the black got lighter, the purple that's in the black kind of was showing out. So I put some orange in there to balance it out and it made it a little bit softer. It took some of that purple away. So you can use opposite colors um, to play with that. So I could have put yellow in there as well. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna ice the sides real quick and messy. Um, it does not have to be thick at all. You want it to be pretty paper thin. It can even be a little bit transparent in places. The fondant is gonna go over this, and this is just to give it some background color 
so it has some depth. So when I put the white fondant over it, it has a little bit of depth. Um, when you think about bark, you have those shadowing and you have those range of color. And so I'm just gonna kind of cheat that system right now with this. So really thin. And I'm gonna use my handy dandy card here. Let's smooth this out. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Bumps and grooves are perfectly fine. I just don't want to have excess buttercream on here. All right, so really that's it. That's beautiful. Um, all right, so we're going to roll out some fondant. Um, before I do that, I'm going to create some knots. And so this is a little bit different than with the buttercream. With the buttercream, I did all the decorations on the side and then I added the knots. Here, I'm actually going to add um, buttercream knots so that the fondant going over it has something to sit on top of. Um, and then we're gonna tear them open. So, I have my coupler again, which is just um, the nut um, for the bolt for my bag here. And I'm gonna pick a spot, and I'm gonna do it over here so you guys can see, and I'm just gonna make a nice big circle. Let's do another one. It's not pretty. There's nothing pretty about it. I can also make, if we really want to be like courageous over here, I can also make some like bumps, bumps and grooves that are happening. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. A tree is not going to be like perfectly symmetrical. Now I will say birch trees tend to be pretty narrow and slender and pretty straight compared to most other trees, but they still have branches that break off and it's a cake. So it can be as wild as you want it to be. So um, I'm just going to smooth that so it's not too crazy and that it has um, some tapering on it. some bumps there and then this stuff we can pull this out a little bit to taper it as well if things are tapered like this they just the fondant lays on them nicely it doesn't have to be pretty at all it just needs to be tapered so the fondant can lay on it nicely and we're actually gonna tear the fondant over it so it doesn't have to be So that is how we start with these guys. A little bit different. Um, really user friendly. So I'm gonna move this guy forward. Make sure I don't knock anything over. I'm gonna roll my front end out here on my table, and then I'm gonna be able to put it on the cake. Um, let me move stuff around so I can do it so you guys can see a little bit better. purchasing fondant, the closest thing would probably be um, Dream Fondant. Um, it is very nice to work with. There are a lot of different brands of fondant. If you have one that works for you, that's awesome. If you make it at home, that's awesome. There are a bunch of different kinds of fondant. It really is whatever you are comfortable with. They all work well. Um, and a lot of like a lot of people don't like the kind of fondant that we use. We use a white chocolate based fondant which is quite delicious. All right, 
right, so I am just rolling this out here. Hey guys, see a bunch of new people jumping on. Thank you for joining. We are rolling out the fondant to put on this cake here so that I can show you how to turn it into a birch tree cake. All right, so I got the fondant rolled out or kneaded here. We just have to knead it until it's smooth. It just has to come up to temperature a little bit. My hands will do enough of that. The chocolate in there just has to get soft. All right, beautiful. So I'm just going to roll this flat enough to put through the sheeter. So don't bump into my cake. And I want it to be kind of tall because I want one sheet to go around the cake. So I want it to be a little bit taller than my cake. So it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna put some powdered sugar on either side of it so it doesn't stick in the sheeter. As it rolls out, it's gonna press out the inside of that fondant. And when that happens, it's going to get sticky. So you wanna make sure that you have some stuff in there to prevent that. All right, I'm gonna roll this out. I'm gonna move you guys over here so you can see. Alright, so I rolled it out as thin as I can get it on this um, sheeter, so it's paper thin, transparent, I can see right through it. I'm going to cut it down so it's a little bit shorter, and then I will show you guys how to use it. Alright, so when I'm using this, I want it to be transparent, so I can see my hand through it. The benefit to that is I'm going to see the color of this cake through it, this icing, and then I'm going to have this nice um, depth of color for my birch tree cake. All right, and I'm going to take one end here and I'm going to just press it on the cake. The top edge can be nice and ripped up just like it shows up in the fondant naturally. That actually works quite well to my advantage. These rips and tears work really well. If you don't like where it's headed, then you can just literally tear the piece of fondant off. Like I can just tear it. I can flatten it. And we can put the next piece right over the top. So you can be kind of reckless, kind of rough with this. Now, I cut this and I have this nice smooth edge. I don't want that, so I'm actually going to tear, if I can, tear this next piece and make that the piece that lays over top. So you want all your edges to look torn. And that's the cool thing about this, a birch tree cake, or a birch tree, has this very torn, weathered looking bark. So you want to make sure that you maintain that tearing, which makes working with fondant for a beginner very nice because it's very easy and very forgiving. I'm going to tear another piece. So when I tear it, I just push this flat so I don't have a giant like gap or a giant bump in the cake. Is this what I tore? I might need some more. I'm just going to tear another piece here and fill this in. You can have pieces that are sticking up too and overlapping. Ooh, I just almost fit. I got to tear the edge of this because I cut that piece. 
Oh, I don't quite fit. All right, so here I'm gonna have to create another little piece. So I'm going to just smooth this flat. Actually, I'm gonna tuck it under there. So I'm gonna pull this up and tuck another piece under. So you really are just tearing this paper thin fondant and piecing it together to fill it all in. And then I'll make it look nice. All right, so I have a nice little hot mess of a cake right now. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that all of my fondant is attached to the cake so that it's not gonna fall off. So I'm just going to press everything in. If I have bumps and stuff like this, I like that. I'm gonna push that right in. I've got too much here, so I'm gonna tear that down. So you don't want it to be too neat and tidy. You want some folds and tears. These pieces that overlap the fondant isn't going to stick to the fondant because that powdered sugar. So I can use that vodka and wet it, but I like to have it just be a little bit offset. If you look at a birch tree cake, it really does have those layering pieces of tree bark that are pulling off. So I like to just kind of smush them down a little bit so it looks like they're ready to be pulled off. Whenever you're hiking, like my kid is always pulling those pieces off. I just want to make sure I don't have too much. So like this is a huge piece of extra, so I'm just going to pull some of it off. Like all these tears and knots in my fondant cakes. Those are my favorite parts of the birch tree cake. All right, so I've got everything attached. I've got my weird bumps here that I put in with my buttercream. I've got my knot, my other knot. We'll play with those in a minute. I've got it attached on top. Some of it's a little higher than I want, so I'll just tear it until it's where I want it. This really is, this is a really good beginner fondant cake too. If you're unsure about fondant, the worst thing that could happen is you have to pull it off and put it back on. It's very forgiving. And you don't need many tools because you're really just tearing things with your hands. Alright, so I'm just pulling these edges off. You can leave some taller, some shorter. All right, so now we're gonna cut the bottom and get rid of all this excess stuff. I like to use my finger and just push it against the bottom and make sure I have everything attached. Nicely to my buttercream. And then we can use the Zacto paring knife. You can use the pizza cutter. Um, I like the Zacto because it's very precise. And I'm just gonna slice it right off. And I'm just following the edge of the cake. And this fondant can be rolled back up and reused for other projects, as long as it's not drying out. So if you take a really long time to do all this, it might start to my blade just went flying. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, Zach to knife safety. Make sure it's attached. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, if you're if you take a little while to do this, your fondant might start to dry out, and then it's probably better to just pitch it because um, it will start to not be very fun to use. So I have this fun little bump that we created. I've got my knot. Got another knot here. This bump, you can literally just smush the buttercream 
and make it whatever shape you want to make it. Super fun just to have some bumps and weird little veins, little knees running into your cake. Um, you just want to make sure that it's tapered so it's not just this weird big thing. So super easy, very fun to do. The knots, you can literally just stick your finger into it until the fondant tears. So the goal is to tear the fondant. Super easy. And then you can mash it around because you don't want it to be pretty and neat. Because this is so fun and easy. So stick your finger in it. You can use your handy dandy pointy to make it a little bit deeper, wider, whatever shape you want to make it. If I was making this for someone to eat, I would be wearing gloves, by the way. Alright, so, got all these little pieces, so I'm going to neaten this up a little bit. Alright, so now we're going to do some cuts and tears to make the rest of the bark look a little bit more like bark. And that is what I use my Zacto knife for. The cool thing about this is, again, you're really just beating up the cake. So you're going to take your Zacto knife, you can use a paring knife, and you're just going to do some cuts. Just like we did with the piping bag for the buttercream, I'm just doing some lines going horizontally around the cake. Some short, some long. If you look at a birch tree cake, they have those linear marks. And we just want to replicate that as much as we can. You don't have to push very hard. You're just scratching the surface. You're not really trying to cut all the way through. Some of these little edges that are torn up, we're going to go back over them. The knots need a little extra attention. The little bumps. You just want to create all these little pieces. So when someone looks at the cake from far away, they don't see all of this, but when they get up close, they have all this texture and, and personality in your cake. Okay, so that's our base. And if you can see this carefully, I'm not sure how well you guys can see this on here. You can see the color coming through, you can see the white, you can see how the knots look a little bit different, the bumps here look a little bit different. Um, then that color showing through that very transparent fondant makes a big difference. Some ways that we can elevate this even more. I can create some really aggressive tears by actually just tearing this, tearing these pieces, and kind of just setting them back together. Again, if you look at the birch tree cakes, they have these very beat up, torn up. So it really is hard to be too aggressive with this cake. You can make some slices that are a little bit bigger. You can pull them open to create some little not looking guys, some little eyes in the tree. Let me do one so you guys can see it a little bit better. Where do I want to do it? Just a slice and then just pull it open. So all kinds of cool little things that you can do to really bring this cake to life. The benefit 
to the fondant is that you can do all these tears and really give it that depth, really give it a lot more texture and personality. I can do knots, but I can't do tears. I can't do all of this stuff with the buttercream. And that's really where you get all of that personality. The next step I would do, honestly, for this cake, if I was doing this for a customer, is I would take it into the airbrush room and I would hit it with just a very, very faint, a couple lines of like a soft brown in a few spots just to add a little bit of range of color so that it's not all white. And that will just give me a little bit more personality, a little bit more um, range of that depth. I like to create as much um, texture and depth of texture as possible. So like shadowing and highlighting and things like that. And so that's really a great way to do that as well. All right, so these little nuts, I'm gonna do the same thing I did to the other guy, and I'm gonna put a little bit of black inside, just to give some shadowing. And find my pointy. Just gives it a little bit more depth. guys let me grab the buttercream cake so I would love to know what you think this is the fondant cake what do you think do you love it um, do you like the buttercream one or the fondant one better do you think you can do it do you want to try it which one do you want to try I would love to know what you guys think buttercream versus fondant we have some perks to both for sure and I would say if you are a comfortable decorator, if you're pretty comfortable in your skills and learning new things, either one is very quick and easy to learn. If you're very new, if you're very unsure, buttercream is probably a little bit easier. Um, you're gonna be a little bit more comfortable playing with buttercream. Um, the fondant is super fun. To be able to tear and beat up and really just tear it and piece it together makes it very rewarding, it's very easy to do. So I'd love to know what you guys think. Buttercream or fondant, which one looks better? What do we like better? What do you like better? Fondant. <laughs> I like fondant better. I feel like you get more texture. All right guys, let me know what questions you have. Tell me what you like. Be sure to go over to our YouTube channel and give us a subscribe. Click the subscribe button and notifications. We're gonna be doing some exclusive content, some more. There's already some exclusive content on our YouTube channel. Um, we are working on getting everything moved over to our YouTube channel. So be sure that you subscribe on there. It is youtube.com slash classic cakes caramel. Thank you so much for joining me for another tutorial Tuesday. I love you all. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. This is Megan Ritz with Classic Cakes.